After surviving a near-fatal wound to the chest, John Pemberton is seeking a cure for his morphine addiction and to ease the pain in his chest. John wants a morphine-free alternative for his pain and is experimenting with different painkillers to find the solution. But little does he know that his experiment with coca and coca wines will create a recipe that will literally change the world as we know it. Let's take a look at how this pharmacist accidentally created Coca-Cola. Pemberton was born on January 8, 1831 in Georgia to James Pemberton and Martha Gant. Pemberton completed his medical degree in chemistry and opened a drugstore in Columbus when he was 19 years old. After some years, John further pursued his studies in pharmaceutical sciences and became a pharmacist. The American Civil War also started in 1861 and John was drafted in the Confederate's army. In 1865, he was injured in the chest in the Battle of Columbus. The wound was near fatal and to ease the pain, doctors gave him morphine. After some time, John became a morphine addict. In 1866, John began to seek a cure for his morphine addiction and began to experiment with different painkillers as alternatives for morphine. In his first recipe, he used buttonbush, a toxic plant, to make the alternative for morphine. After some more experiments, he used coca and coca wine and named it Pemberton French Wine Coca, which was a black syrup and had the taste of cocoa beans. In the same year, John, with the help of an Atlanta drugstore owner, William Venable, perfected the recipe of the beverage that was going to become Coca-Cola. William mixed the base syrup with carbonated water by accident and made a glass full of this beverage. John's one decision changed the game when he decided to sell this as a soda drink rather than a medicine. Frank Robinson, bookkeeper and partner of John, named this new soda drink Coca-Cola. Robinson hand wrote the famous logo of Coca-Cola on the bottles and ads. John marketed the new drink as delicious, refreshing and exhilarating and claimed that Coca-Cola relieved exhaustion and calmed nerves. Soon after Coca-Cola hit the market, John fell ill and nearly went bankrupt. He sold his rights to his formula to his business partner in Atlanta. John believed that Coca-Cola will someday be a national drink and he wanted to leave the ownership to his son. But his son wanted money and hence in 1888, they sold their remaining portion of the patent of Coca-Cola for $300. After cashing out his shares from the company for a total of $1,800, John died after a few months. In 1891, Asak Handler, another Atlanta pharmacist, secured ownership of the company which he bought for $2,300. Candler completely turned the sales of the company from 9,000 gallon. Sales in 1890 to 370,000 in 1900. During that decade, different syrup manufacturing plants were also established in different states of the U.S. Coca-Cola also signed its first agreement in 1899 with an independent bottling company, which was allowed to buy the syrup and produce bottles and distribute the Coca-Cola drink. In 1919, Coca-Cola's ownership was changed again when a sack handler sold the company to Robert Woodruff for $25 million. Robert remained president of the company for three decades. After the Second World War, the company diversified and Coca-Cola launched its new products. Coca-Cola bought the rights to the German soft drink company Fanta and introduced Sprite in 1961. In the same year, the company purchased the Minute Maid Corporation and entered the citrus juice market. From 1960 to the present day, Coca-Cola has launched different products and versions in which the most notables are Diet Coke, Powerade, Dasani, and is continuously innovating. Coca-Cola has also acquired different drinks companies like Limga, Mazza Thumbs Up, and many more. Subscribe to the channel if you like this video and don't forget to share it with your friends and family.